Hello, my name is Stuart Meacham with Capstan Ag Systems. Today we're going to go a brief overview over the uh, pinpoint system on this HS1100 model Apache sprayer. Um, we're going to cover basically what you need to do in order to properly PDI the machine in. You're already doing your PDI procedure for the machine once it's hit the factory floor. We're going to talk about Capstan or pinpoint specific procedures that we need to look at and uh, a few different things that we need to just know before we go into running the system and actually doing some spraying with it. Uh, we're out at a farm today and we don't really have the ability to actually spray, um, but we'll be able to cover the basics of what you need to know in order to do this. So starting off, uh, first thing we're gonna wanna do is just a visual check of our components. Um, every machine is gonna have to require 80 mesh strainers. So we're gonna need to make sure that there are 80 mesh strainers in the machine that should have come that way from the factory. And I'm, I'm assuming they're going to be in there, but we need to check and make sure we got 80 mesh. We need to look at our spray nozzles. Now, these won't have tips on them, but uh, we need to make sure that every one of them is pointed down. So that way, when we do get ready to spray, uh, we're able to do so without any restrictions there. If we don't have tips, we're not going to be able to effectively uh, check our pressure control with this system. So if you do have the ability to get some tips on the machine before you spray with it and it goes to the field, that's optimal. Uh, in this regard, all we're going to be able to do is check the function of the valve, making sure they're coming off and on in the appropriate sections uh, and, and individually on the nozzle control. Leading into that, in order to do that, we need to have some basic component identification. Many of you haven't ever seen a pinpoint system on a sprayer before, so I'll kind of go over some of the components that we have on the system. First and foremost, we've got our solenoid valve. So this solenoid is on every individual nozzle. It's going to take the place of our drip check screws right onto where the drip check normally would be. Um, this solenoid, uh, every one of these are 12 watt coils and that's what's indicated by the blue heat shrink on there. Some of you that have dealt with the retrofit systems in the past may see a black heat shrink there. That's indi that's indicative of a 7 watt coil. All the, mas all the machines coming from the factory will have 12 watt coils on them uh, as of right now. Um, Moving on to that, we have what we call our valve control module or our VCM. Each VCM has a serial number that coincides with that VCM and that can coincides with each individual section on the machine. So if you've got an 11 section machine like this one here, uh, while you're out here, it's good practice to get a piece of paper and a pencil and write down the serial number in the order starting from the left side, what I would call the driver's side of the machine and working your way all the way to the right side. So section one all the way to section 11 here, we're gonna make sure that we have each serial number written down in order. Um, this is important for when we do our geometry setup or our location setup in the cab. And uh, we'll be using that a little bit later and going through that here in just a little bit. Um, other things we wanna pay attention to out here, just making sure that each one of these is tight. So sometimes it, 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 anybody can make the mistake of making sure these are, are not too tight. We don't, there is a torque spec on these, but we wanna make sure they're good and snug. Uh, they do have a, uh, I believe it's a quarter inch uh, nut driver attachment on the outside and 40 inch pounds is the actual torque spec. But we just wanna make sure they're good and tight. We can't turn them by hand very easily. Also, uh, while we're at the back of the machine, this is the point in where we just kind of visually inspect all of the harnessing and making sure that uh, none of our harnessing is in a pinch point or in a fold joint. Most of that's gonna be made pretty apparent whenever you do fold the machine for the first time or when it's folded at the factory. And so these harnesses you're gonna find in the fold joints are gonna have be pinched or uh, rubbed in, the, in some bad spots. Just visually inspect that while you're out here. Um, we have our gateway hub. So this is the, the brains of the operation. It's under cover, not going to get into that because there's really no need to that right now, but this is where all of our VCMs, which are tied to every one of our coils, tie into, and this feeds the information back up into the cab. We also tie into the rate controller back here, and it goes all goes through the brains or the gateway hub. So um, other than that, we're going to move on to the next, jump into the cab. Okay, so let's just say for reference that uh, at the factory, these, these settings are supposed to be uh, preset in the machines. Uh, but just in case someone made a mistake or there was something that happened and one of our VCMs is out of order, what do we do to fix that? So the first thing we're going to do is uh, make sure we 
look and verify that everything's right. If it's not, we're going to have to do a location setup. So we're going to press and hold our location setup button while we're on this screen. And it's going to blink a few times and then you're going to think nothing is happening, but continue to hold until you're prompted with this screen. Once you're prompted with this screen, you can let off the button. Uh, you're given two options on this prompt screen. That's auto setup and edit, edit, edit setup. We're always going to choose auto setup because it walks you through every step needed to perform a proper location setup. So we're going to hit our check. And then uh, the first question is going to be, is it a 15 or 20 inch nozzle spacing? This particular machine is actually a 20 inch nozzle spacing. So we're going to increase that to 20. And we're going to hit our check. The next screen it brings you to is your VCM order and VCM orientation screen. Now, this is where we can electronically move the VCMs around on the machine. And this needs to really match what's on the serial numbers that are on the boom. This is where they need to match on the electronic screen. So if you had a serial number that was detected in the wrong spot, you're going to look at your uh, location setup information that you had written down from earlier. And you're going to find out, okay, that particular VCM is out of order. The way we do that, and for reference, this screen, all the VCMs are in the correct order, but I'm going to show you what it looks like to move one. So 5673, let's just say that was supposed to be in the third spot, according to our paper that we have written down. So we're going to take 5673 and we're going to check and we're going to move that two spaces over. Now, when we did that, 5673 is now in the third section, third position. So when we did that, uh, VCMs two and three actually moved back into their spots. So if we hit our check mark again, we let go of that VCM. And now 5886 and 5674 have actually shifted over one section each. So now 5673 is in the third position. So if that's what we needed to do to fix that problem, that's all we have to do. But let's just say 5673 needed to be over here. Well, we're going to scroll. We're going to take our 5673. We're going to select and we're going to scroll over. We're going to put it in the number eight position. So we're going to hit our check mark. Now our problem is our orientations are backwards. So while we're on a VCM, whenever the yellow indicator is on any, any of the VCMs, we can hit our up or down arrow and that's going to allow us to flip the orientation. So we know that that VCM needs to be electronically in that spot, but the orientation is backwards. So I'm going to hit my down arrow. And now I have swapped that orientation. So now we look at the boom and it looks like it should, like it does on the machine. Once we have this screen matching what's on our paper, we can move on to the next step. So when we get to this screen here, this is our boom control switch setup. And what this is going to do is assign a boom section to our corresponding VCNs. There's two things that we need to pay attention to here is the color of the actual VCM itself and then the number that's presented underneath when it says toggle boom control switch one. That number will change as we toggle through the switches. Now, if we had the machine running here, we could actually perform this test. But for all intents and purposes, we're just going to talk about what it would do. So as we go through each individual section, we're going to flip our switch and this VCM would turn red. And at the same time, but a little bit after, this number would change to number two. It's important that you toggle your switches slowly and allow this number, this VCM to turn red and this number to change to number two. And it's important you do that in a slow and steady space, pace all the way across the uh, boom as to not tie two VCMs to one boom section. The reason being is this is ind indicative of a VCM getting the signal. And this is indicative of the gateway hub getting the signal. And those two things need to get the signal and catch up before we move on to the next. So when toggling through this, you want to make sure that all your boom sections come on and that they correspond to the appropriate VCM on the machine. Once finished with this selection, we're going to hit our escape to finish the location setup. Now, it's going to give you one final look at the location setup table. This does not mean that we are done. Uh, you're going to, again, correspond your paper that you have written down and making sure that all of your location setup is appropriate. And then we're going to hit our escape button one more time. 
and it's going to ask us, do you want to save this? Now, make sure that you go slowly through this process so you don't accidentally hit uh, the no and have to start all over again. So what you're going to do is scroll over, hit your yes and your check. It will load and power down. And once it uh, machine power or the system powers down, then you can power it back up and your new location setup will be saved. Uh, every time you do a location setup, it will require a display reboot in order for that to take effect. Um, if you have made a mistake somewhere along the lines, you can choose the no option and it will let you start all over from the very beginning. If there are any questions on this, feel free to ask them after at the end of the training and they will be able to give you references on uh, and answer specific questions towards that. Okay, now that we've completed our location setup, the next step is going to be to check out and look at the settings in our system setup screen. This is where you're going to find all of the actual set settings for pressure, rate control, GPS, uh, every other facet of the system. Um, when you hit the, the system setup button, you're going to notice that we have two uh, menu structures. So we have what we call our basic menu, which would be everything the operator would need to access, uh, like his gallon counters and acre counters. Uh, and then uh, settings like the nozzle control key fob. So if you have your little key fob uh, to walk through each one of your nozzles individually or sections, you would go in here and change that setting. Uh, then you got your system voltage and pressures and things like that. Um, we don't really need to pay a lot of attention to what's on this as far as a, as a setup uh, goes. Um, one thing that we want to make sure we pay attention to is kind of like our overlap distance. That will need to be done in the field whenever we are able to do a field start on these machines. Um, but for what we're doing today, we're not going to really pay attention to much that's going on in the uh, basic menu structure. So we're going to jump down to where it says advanced settings. We're going to hit our check mark. Now, this is where. Uh, the operator shouldn't be. So this is where everything that we set up and save today is going to be uh, not readily available and accessible by the customer. A uh, couple things I'm just going to hit the high notes on. Uh, all of these settings are explained in the manual, but a uh, couple that we want to pay attention to. Uh, if you have any uh, problems with tuning of pressure, this is where we're going to focus on our system gains, uh, system proportional integral and differential, and our dead bend pressure. Uh, there are plenty of uh, descriptions in the manual as to how to change those and what they do, um, but that is anything that has to do with the pressure control side of the system. Um, as we scroll on down, the next thing we want to look at is the GPS measurements that are in the screen. So for these particular machines, we have uh, antenna ahead of rear axle, right of center, and above ground. If you're dealing with an RS1 rate controller, those three settings are going to be zero because the RS1 generates the uh, signal already above uh, in the center and above the rear axle. So in our screen, those need to be set up as zero. The one you really want to pay attention to is the boom ahead of rear axle. And you see that this is a negative value. That is because the boom is in fact not ahead of the rear axle, it's behind. So we need to actually measure this, this from the center axle of the machine to the actual boom where the nozzles lay and put that negative value in. In this case, it's negative 78 inches. Just make sure that that is a negative value unless you're dealing with a front mount boom um, situation. Uh, next is going to be the forward reverse detection. This has to do specifically with the RS1 rate controller. We're going to set that to compass. And when we do a field start on the machine and actually are able to drive and spray the machine, uh, we will need to calibrate that compass and do a compass calibration procedure. Rob will cover that a little bit in his present presentation, and we'll probably have more videos to come out later down the road that show the actual field start process of the machine. But all of that is in the manual on how to do so. Scrolling on down, um, we're going to drop down to where we get into some of our uh, rate control procedures. Now, anything that has to do with pressure control, we're going to be dealing with in here. And the majority of everything we have to do with rate control is going to be done in the rate controller itself. But we do need, there are some numbers in here that need to match what's in the rate controller. And two of those are the servo minimum and maximum duty cycle. In this case, it's 20 and 80. Um, that is a standard. 
whatever these numbers are need to match what is in the rate controller itself. And uh, on that, the settings in there are also 20 and 80. So now they match as 20 and 80. Um, scrolling on down, the last thing, a uh, couple things we're going to pay attention to is the flow meter calibration. Whatever the flow meter tag or whatever is in the rate controller, 1432 is what needs to match in here. So value for value, 1432 pulses per 10 gallon is what needs is what is in the rate controller. That is so we get an accurate read of the flow meter itself. Then we the last three settings that we want to pay attention to are the navigation IMU that needs to be enabled, pressure commander needs to be enabled, and GPS lag time needs to be three tenths of a second or 0.3 seconds uh, anytime you're dealing with an RS1. That is the standard that we found to work best in the field, so let, we'll stick with those standards uh, unless something else changes. Other than that, system setup is uh, in the manual and they should come from the factory with all this. Again, this is just a verification of what we're looking at in the screen, but uh, any questions can be asked at the end of this presentation. So now we're gonna jump over onto the uh, rate controller here or the Viper 4. And we're gonna talk about what settings we need to be looking at and verifying here. This again should all be set up from the factory, but these are things that we need to do and, and check before we actually go spray in the field. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our GPS setup. So we're hit our GPS tab. We're going to go to our gears. We're going to hit the satellite uh, tab at the top and look for serial output configuration. Uh, so we need a baud rate of anywhere from 19.2 to uh, 38.4 to 115 200. And we're going to make sure that our GGA, VTG, and ZDA are all set to 10 hertz as they are here. And once that's good, we're going to verify over. We'll come back over to our screen here. Go to system setup and scroll down till we see our baud rate. Um, if these three messages are not set to 10 hertz, our baud rate will say searching there. So what we wanna do is make sure that our baud rate is reading out here. It will auto baud, so it'll pick it up as soon as it gets connected. If you do not see a baud rate on our screen, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you either check your connections or make sure your output type is set correctly. Once that's done, hit your check mark and back out of it. We're going to look at uh, our rate set up rate pressure settings and why these settings are the way they are so first we're going to start out we're going to go to our gears we're going to go to the house or no, i'm sorry the product control settings and first thing you see you see your uh, min and max 20 and 80 again we talked about that earlier those need to match uh the what's in our screen or our screen needs to match what's in here um, we're not going to run a standby pump pwm so we're going to leave that unchecked and our pump PWM frequency is going to be set to 60 hertz. Uh, obviously, our flow meter cal needs to match what's in the screen and what's on the tag of the flow meter itself. Our response sensitivity is at 40. Uh, at, at 40. And again, uh, these are all starting points. There may have to be adjustments made when you actually run these machines in the field. Dead band pressure or dead band of 2%. And we are good with these settings. So then we're going to go to our pressure control settings. Uh, our response rate is 80. Our min and max pressure are 10 and 150 psi, and that is because we're our pressure commanding, and we are basically taking over the pressure control from a pressure-based control system that is the rate controller on this machine. So everything here is good. We're going to go back to our house, and now we're going to turn our pump on. So you notice that our uh, boom pressure is at 12 PSI and the pump's not even technically running. It's electronically on, but the machine is turned off. What this is going to represent is a loosely based to the duty cycle of the capstan system because we effectively have to take over the pressure control in this system because this is a pressure based calculation system. And so are we. So that is what our pressure commander does and how it does it. 